you guys knew about these words, right? You didn't know they were called that? So, like all verbs, they have, what does a verb wings. have? Wings. 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 What else? Feathers. Feathers. And a beak. A beak. So they have Too a beak. Feathers. <laughs> wings. <laughs> Doing. It's hunting. And so 
So this saves energy until the time is right to fly down and grab its food. And, sorry, I killed the fly from this side. Grabbing its food and the way the raptors do it is what they're named for. Birds of prey have some special features. I'm gonna take you out here. They have a sharp, curved beak, and then they're strong, sharp talons. And so talons are what kind of set them apart. That is how they grab their food, that prey. And I have some things to pass around in a moment. And these are from birds that are no longer alive. But I want you to keep in mind, uh, we really enjoy animals at the Nature Center. And we wouldn't just go kill birds so I can have pieces of it to show you. Um, but have you guys ever seen a bird that has passed away on the side of the road? Yeah. Road kill. So, yes, all kinds of animals. So people at the Nature Center take those animals that have passed away and they clean them and then they, we can use parts of that to show you about those animals. Because I'm going to show you a few things. First things I want to show you. Cool. And this is from a hawk. And what I want to show you is that hollow bone. Okay? So you can look inside this wing and that's the inside of its, its arm bone. Right? Remember that first part of the arm. And you can see the little tiny struts and you can see how it's hollow. You can also feel it, but please be gentle, because even though there's, we don't find a lot of these nowadays, and if we find one, we want to make sure to keep it for a long time. So, you can pass around. This is a hawk wing, so check out the bones. I also have coming around one of the birds of the night. Owl. Owl. And I want you to notice a difference between the, what they feel like. This one also has a bone, but it's much harder. It's actually more connected, it's not broken. You can't see inside of it. But since you're feeling a wing, I thought you can feel the owl's wing and see if you notice a difference. It's super soft. I didn't do this very well this morning, I'm sorry. I also have some other creepy cool things to pass around. And I'll probably be walking around with this. I want to show you some skulls. So can everyone point to their skull for me? It's in here. It's the Where's bones you? inside your head. Okay? It's in my heart. It's the bones in the head. And I'll kind of talk you through this because this one's a little wobbly, so I'm not going to actually have you pass this one around because it's, it's kind of fragile. But one is of a hawk, right, daytime hunter, and one is of an owl. So notice some differences, but notice that curved beak we were just talking about. They both have it. This one's a little bit crooked right now. And then notice the eyes. So we'll talk about that in just a few. So I'll kind of show you some of the other things. So, yes. I think about vision. And so we are also feeling their feathers, which is pretty cool. So I'm kind of showing these ones two rows at a time, and the last row will come with this. So that curved beak, because they eat meat. It's sharp, and it helps them rip it up. They don't have those teeth to do it. I want to show you two skulls. Talk. Too, but 
This is the muscles. We have muscles to attach, but they have very, very short. We interact with these animals with things that are dangerous, like hard or drugs. And so we've had a lot of animals that have passed away. And then we can use things from them to show you about. All right, if we had a, a human skull, right, we, we might see that our eyes are not our entire head like some of these birds are. So I'm going to show you a cool little slide. This is a human eye shape, okay? Notice how round it is. And what do you call a 3D circle? Elena? It's called a sphere. A sphere. A sphere or a, a ball, right? Our eyes are a ball shape or a sphere, and we can roll them, right? Can you guys all roll your eyes, right? Well, let's start to notice eagle eyes and owl eyes. Does it start to change? of it as those fancy cameras, right? The ones that you get on picture day. You notice that the lenses start to come more and more out the more and more powerful the camera is, right? You get those little details even clearer and clearer. The fancier, the longer the lens. Well, watch eagle's eyes starting to come out, and then look at owl's eye. So their eye shapes are different than ours, but they're much, much more powerful than ours. They can see small things like you read a book, right? The font on the page. They can see those words, a whole football field over it. Whoa. Whoa. Tiny, tiny words. So their vision is very powerful. And that's oh, helpful, that's especially to an animal who depends on it to hunt it. So different eyes, especially the owl. And then we looked at that skull earlier. Most of their head is devoted to their eye. So that kind of changes some other senses. But another really powerful sense is hearing, especially in the owls. So, so I want to show you some things about owls. And we saw this first owl, right? Let's go back to her. Where are its ears? Is this one up here? Let's take it on this one. Where would this one be? So, their ears are kind of under the feathers behind their eyes. What? Okay? And we'll go back to this one. Her ears would be somewhere around these areas. And their ears are different than ours. So, if you guys can kind of put your fingers where your ears are ish, all right? They're kind of in the same area, right? Well, an owl's ear, one will be a little bit higher, one will be a little bit lower, one will kind of point forward. One will point backwards. Nope. They have two ears, but they're just one's up and forwardish, one's down and backish. And so you can kind of see in this picture. Here's the up and kind of forwardish, and then it turns the other side, and here's the down and backish. So what does that mean? Well, they're hearing all around them at once. But you know how we have these little funnels? funnel the sounds in. An owl has uses its entire face. So frontal hearing is very, very important, but they also have this 3D kind of hearing. Look at this one. Do you think this one has really powerful hearing? Yes. Its whole face looks like a satellite dish. <laughs> so does anyone know what kind of owl this one is? It's a barn owl. It is. And we call it the heart face shaped owl. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So barn owls are the white owls in our area, and they have this heart-shaped face. This one is called the Great Gray. It's one of the biggest owls in our area. It's pretty cool. All right, now we're going to talk about what they eat. You guys ready for this? Yes. All right, so first you see this one's coming down, talons are out. It's about to grab something. This one has grabbed. Oh. <gasps> a mouse. It's kind of like a mouse. It's a, kind of a mouse that lives in fields called a vole. And this is a special raptor that likes to live in these big open fields called a kite. Not like the toy. The toy was named after this bird. So this one has this red eye, which is kind of cool and creepy, and it has this whitish feathers um, with some black shoulders. And what they do is they're above a field, and they flap their wings, and they hover. So they're in the air, and they're hovering, and they're hovering, and they're hovering. And then you'll watch them dive down and grab those wolves. So if you're ever on the freeway near an open field, you see this big white bird hovering, watch it. It might go down and you might get to see it come up with something. Sometimes it's a mouse, sometimes it's a snake. It's pretty cool. So they start 
notice these birds. Here, what kind of owl again? Bird owl. And it has a
they do to be really fast? Can they run? They fly. They fly. So these birds will go way up high, and sometimes they live in skyscrapers, like in the like in downtown. We have peregrine falcons, and they'll nest way up high in the skyscrapers. And what they'll do is they'll dive, and that big long fall, they tuck their wings and they dive and they build up all this speed, and a peregrine falcon can dive up to 200 miles per hour. So you go on the freeway, what, 65 miles per hour? This is double that and more. So they're extremely fast. But what they do is when they see a bird, right, the bird's flying in the air, they fly down, and right when they're about to make contact with it, instead of opening their feet, they make fists. <laughs> they punch it in the air, and the bird gets knocked out, it falls to the ground, and then they can eat it. So they didn't have to capture it, they punch it. Isn't that crazy? So you can see that's what happened on this one, too. They're pretty crazy predators. So. Thank <laughs> you. 
And so when he hopped out of that nest, he didn't fly. And he fell all the oh. way to the ground. And he landed on his shoulder. Are you going to try to jump or poop? And one of his shoulders, when he fell, broke. And so... Oh, he looks like he's going to jump back and fly. Sorry. And so he broke one of his shoulders, and so one of his wings doesn't work quite right. And those hollowish bones aren't as easy to fix as our dense bones. So he was found by a human on the ground. They took him to a vet, and as he healed, he got to hang out with a human for a long time. She put him in her house with him, let him sit on her shoulder, on her head while they watched TV. <laughs> so Rocky got really used to people. But that was kind of a good thing for him. Thank you guys. Yep, just that real quick. Reach up. Because he would never be able to go back in the wild. He can't fly very well. So can he hunt very well? No. 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 And so if he was to go in the wild, he'd probably be eaten by a bigger hawk or starved. And so um, he was already really used to people. He wasn't going to be well enough to go in the wild. So it was a good choice for, for us to, to snag him and take care of him. And he's been at the Nature Center for, for most of those 15 years. He was a few months old when he was found. The lady had him for a few months. And then we've had him for the rest. So sometimes when we go in Rocky's enclosure, he hops on our shoulder or he hops on our head. And his little nails aren't, aren't very nice. So, you know, he doesn't grab us, but he does like to hang out. Which is neat, because most birds are afraid of us, especially ones that used to be wild. I just want to touch him. Right? He doesn't like to be touched still. We're lucky if we get that. Because birds are mostly feathers. So if he was to catch another bird, he has to go all the way around their feathers. He's like, why are you trying to grab me? I'm just showing. He has to go all the way around his the feathers. <laughs> And he has to grab their little bodies, and because he does. His eyes are real. Yeah. I also hope you're noticing these black stripes under his eyes. We're gonna talk about that. My dad caught a, a, spots. a pigeon See, that spots. delivered notes. Oh, a messenger pigeon? Yeah. Interesting. So we can't one, touch, but we can look at him. The other one we won't be able to get this close. So enjoy the close-up. Um, not as soft as an owl wing. Um, plus, I haven't touched them. I see it on this one. If we can see it better. Oh. Here's another version of him up close. Okay. <laughs> and, okay, that one too. So these are falcons. And they have these signature eye stripes. This is the peregrine. They almost have a whole hood of black. But has anyone ever heard of, like a cheetah has this, Football players do this. Baseball players oh, yeah. do this. Oh, yeah. What's going on with this black eye stripe? Does anybody know? Why do, they, why do they have that? Why do people put that on? What's going on? Why people put it on? Because uh, why do pigeons, I don't know, uh, hawks put it on? Because they, because hmm. they think about things. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, we've seen it a lot. But why, why do people use it? Why do you think animals? When they want to catch a ball, sometimes they're looking up, and if it's a nice sunny day, what could they accidentally be staring into while they're trying to look for that ball? The sun. The sun. So that black stripe helps absorb the sunlight. So it doesn't go in your eyes, but it goes into the dark because black absorbs light. So it helps them see when they're staring in places where the sun might be blinding them. And so why that might be helpful for falcons. Maybe when they're diving out, or maybe when they're looking out, because they are one of the few that eat other birds that are flying, and they're gonna ambush them in the air, and so they have these special kind of built-in sunglasses so they can mark their prey. Yeah. Stomach can't digest all of that, and so eventually.
eventually, after he digests all the good, yummy, yummy meat, he'll throw up the undigestible thing. Oh, God. And it looks like a little, a little nugget of fur and bones. I think his might just be fur. Owls have the bones. You, um, you can check it out. Sorry, Rock. I know. I'm moving too fast. So this is what the throw up might look like for an animal that's bigger than him. So one more thing is, how do I know he's a boy? A male. Well, in most raptor worlds, you can't tell them apart. They're the same color. The kestrels are one of the few that have a color difference. Rocky has this beautiful blue-gray on his body. That tells me he's a male. He also only has that one stripe. If he was a female, a girl, he would have a little, she would have more stripes on her tail and she would be more brown. But they both would have that nice eye stripe um, and the girl, the female, would actually be a little bit bigger. So other than that, their lady and gentleman parts are inside their bodies. You can't just look and say, oh, what is it? <laughs> that doesn't work for the, boy, or the bird world. So a little bit different. I'll talk about that with the next animal too. Okay, last question. <laughs> it's daytime, um, and you would be too if you had to be with woken up early all the time. The glove I'm putting on, bigger, thicker, um, that could, you can even Yeah, these animals are built for intimidation. They're strong, they're tough, they're big. When she's really upset, she gets big, she spreads out her body, and those feather tufts go straight up. So now she looks really much more bigger, right? So they help intimidate. I've also seen her when she's sleeping. She gets really slender. <laughs> That's what I put down there. You guys can, those can get a few first-hand uh, experience what owl poop looks like. It just looks like regular bird poop. We call it the whitewash because it has that white color. And then they'll often cough up those pellets. That you it might be blue. So she also sticks them up when she's sleeping. 
Because imagine her in our cities, right? Where would she be sleeping? In the woods. In the woods. In the woods. So I'm a beautiful oak tree. She's chosen my tree to sleep next to. She's next to my trunk. Would you be able to see her? No. What's that called when you blend in? You can camouflage. camouflage. She has this amazing camouflage. And she even sticks those little feathers up. So she looks like she has twigs sticking out of her head, too. So during the day, they want to sleep and rest. If another bird knows that there's an owl, they'll try to dive bomb it and scare it out. But at night, it's owl's turn. Right? She'll rule the night. Their nicknames, the great horned owl, are the flying tiger. Because look at how big that prey is. She's incredibly strong and bossy. She's kind of a bully. Um, great horned owls, I know, right? Sorry. The great horned owls have incredible eyesight, incredible hearing, but they're also one of the strongest. So let's look at her talons. Can you guys see those? Oh. Can you guys all make a fist for me? Okay, so on three, we're going to squeeze, and we're going to feel that pressure. We'll talk about that. Okay, so one, two, three, feel that pressure. Okay, so that pressure, you measure it in PSI, pounds per square inch. A strong man that works out all the time, human, can squeeze about 70 PSI. Guess how much her feet can squeeze? 90. Anywhere from 500 to 1,000 oh, So once you are in those talons, or once you challenge those talons, uh -oh. who's going to win? Yeah. And she only weighs about 3 pounds. Like if I, my cat, who's like her size, weighs like 16 pounds. So those light bones, those feathers, really help her light, keep her light. But she's so strong and so powerful, she can grab something that weighs six pounds up to nine pounds. So double her body weight. And you guys want to see how, how big she is? Yeah. yeah. You want to show them? Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, let's listen. Let's see if she has that feather tail. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She has about a four-foot wingspan. So I think some of you are probably about four foot, right? Yes. So if you lay it sideways, her wings can spread out as wide as yours. So pretty cool. big bird, but she's pretty, pretty tucked in. And gray horned owls, like I said, are, are kind of bullies. They're the first ones to nest. Um, right now, this is the time that they would have found a nest, called for their partner, getting back together, um, and then she would lay eggs. But she doesn't make her own nest. If a hawk made a nest last year, she's first. It's like, ooh, that one looks good. The red tails did a really good job of making that, that nest. I'm gonna take it. And if the red tailed hawk said, hey, that's my nest, what's she gonna do? Eat it. She'll bite it, and she'll probably win. And so she can take whatever she wants, and she's strong. And the female gray horned owls are actually the bigger ones. So the male would just look just like her, but a little bit smaller. All right, why is Echo at the nature center? Why doesn't she live in our neighborhood hunting skunks? Ooh, watch her, she's watching something else. Oh, yeah. And she was starting to come down to people, and she was making little baby noises, but she was this size. Is that a baby owl anymore? No, 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 no. And she was making baby noises, so she was looking for food, and she was looking for food from humans. Is that normal owl behavior? No. No. She's Awesome. She's an amazing predator. She should be out finding her own food. Why was she coming to humans and being nice to humans and saying, where's my food? <laughs> well, she can't tell us, so we can only guess. Um, but we think someone found her as a baby, took her in, and started taking care of her. They fed her. And so she got used to people. She didn't learn how to hunt from her parents. She learned, find a human, they give you food. <laughs> For some reason, her human stopped feeding her, or maybe she escaped. But she came looking for a new human. Do you have a rat in your pocket? No. A skunk? <laughs> no. So do you have the food she needs? Yep. And do you want her to be grumpy and upset and coming down to you with these talents? No, 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 no. no, no. And not everybody wants a big bird coming down. They might kick or hit her, right? <laughs> what is going on? And so after she kept approaching people, they reported it, and animal control came out, caught her, and found out doesn't know how to live in the wild. And so she 
She needed a home, and the Nature Center was chosen to be her home. We're really lucky we have her because she's healthy and she's used to humans. Doesn't mean she's nice though, but we can we can use her to teach you guys about the owls in our area because great horned owls live here too. All right, I have time for a few questions. It looks like, and then I think we're out of time. Oh, At an no, adult at one years old? No, no way. Like, no. like 18, right? We take a long time. All right, couple more. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if she does it. I can't make her, but sometimes I can position her where she's curious. So, you guys want to try it? Keep your shoulders straight for a second. Let's check out our own movement. All right, turn your head as far as you can on one side. Oh, no. I'll try the other. Can you go past that shoulder? Yes. Yes. She can. She can go all the way to the middle of her back and then all the way back around. She can't turn her head in a full circle. We have some very important stuff going from our brain to the rest of our bodies, right? Our heart, kind of like little cords. If you kept wrapping your head around and around and around, what would happen to all those cords, those veins, those arteries? They would get all tangled and break. So she can't do a full circle, but she has double the neck bone. But what can't she do that we can? Remember her eyes? She can't move her eyes, so if she wants to look over there, over there, she has to move her head. So, a little bit different than us. Good observation. Any other questions? I'm an apartment, I'm a car. Mm -hmm. It went to a random nest, and then there was a baby bird in it, and then it dropped it, but then it died. Oh. And then she buried it in her bed. Oh. That's so, question. <laughs> your problems with raptors, like we said, they eat a lot of things. Sometimes it's tough to watch. Sometimes it's very interesting. Um, but one thing I did want to tell you, if you have an owl in your neighborhood, <coughs> you might hear it this time of year. Oh. And not all, all owls have a different call, depending on what they are. And this is the owl that goes, hoo, 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 hoo. She's the one that hoots. Hoo, hoo, hoo. We have different owls that hoots. <laughs> was setting much earlier and there was owls calling and she was in her little kennel I brought her up she didn't call back so I don't think she knows she doesn't hoot a lot so I don't think she knows how to really talk to her owls. all right I think we're just about out of time or do you take a few questions